Hello students, hope you are following the chapter from the starting that we discussed about matter and the physical and chemical classification of matter and we also discussed about the five laws of chemical combination and now it is the time to, to learn about a concept which is very very important to understand the chemistry and that is known as mole concept. I have some questions for you. What do you think? What is the weight of one mole of the Olympic shot put balls? And what is the volume occupied by one mole of soft balls? The answer to this question you will get in this particular part. So let's start. So now we are going to discuss about a topic which is very very important to understand the chemistry in a better way. That is mole concept. So in this concept we will see what is meant by mole, how do you define it and what is its significance. Okay, so let's start. So what is a mole? So throughout this chapter I will be using a term repeatedly that is mole. So understanding this most mole concept is really really essential to understand the rest of the chemistry better. It may be physical, organic, inorganic. This mole concept is everywhere. So let's understand this mole concept better. So if you see chemistry is a quantitative science. We need a counting unit. Even if you take a drop of water, a water droplet, it contains huge number of water molecules. So many number of water molecules. So we require a suitable unit that allows us to understand the chemistry easy. Okay, so mole is such a unit that it provides a easy way to handle these very big or very huge numbers. Okay, so let's define what is meant by one mole is. The one mole is the amount of substance that contains as many number of atoms as there are in 12 grams of C12. Okay, so say suppose I have taken a, a 12 grams of C12. Say this is the substance that is I have taken 12 grams, this is my 12 grams of C12 isotope I have taken, okay. I don't know how many number of atoms are there in this, but it contains some number of atoms, okay. So uh, one mole, I can call some of the substance as one mole, say this is my other substance, it may be solid or liquid or a gas, I can call it as a one mole, if the same, the number of atoms present in this thing is equal to the number of atoms present in this 12 grams of C12 okay. So if you calculate, so if you know the mass of one single carbon atom, we can calculate how many number of carbon atoms are there in this because this is 12 grams. So 12 grams is equal to say suppose x is the number of carbon atoms present in this x into the mass of each carbon atom, mass of each C12 atom. So from this we will get the value of x right. So this x gives the number of atoms present in this sample. So if you calculate the x value, the x value will come around this one. So this is 6.022 into 10 power 23 number of carbon atoms are there in this sample. Okay. So one mole of any other substance whether it is a solid or a liquid or a gas is going to contain these many number of particles. right? So here I am using a general term particles because the particles may be atoms, they may be molecules, they may be electrons, they may be ions, they may be formula units. So in generally I am generalizing it, I am calling it as particles. Okay? So one mole contains these many number of particles and this number is known as Avogadro's number. A special name is given to this number and that, that is called Avogadro's number. So one mole is equals to Avogadro's number that is equals to 6.022 into 10 power 23 number of units or I can say particles. Okay, So let's move on. Avogadro's number as I discussed before. Avogadro's number is what? 6.022 into 10 power 23 number of particles or units and this number is known as Avogadro's number. Okay, So Avogadro's number is simply the number of atoms carbon atoms present in 12 grams of C12 isotopes okay? and its numerical value is this much. So 1 mole is equals to 6.02 into 10 power 23 
units is same as saying 1 dozen equals to 12 units. Okay, we know that 1 dozen is equals to 12 units. So that units may be like it may be apples, bananas, pens. Okay, so one mole of banana, sorry, one dozen of bananas contain 12 pieces, right? 12 items. So similarly, the one mole of any compound contains these many number of units. Okay, so if I ask you, give me one mole of water, that means you have to give me some amount of water that contains these many number of water molecules, right? So if I ask you, give me one mole of salt, one mole of salt. So you should, you should give me some salt which contains this Avogadro number of NaCl formula units, that is salt formula units, NaCl formula units, okay? Because one mole of any sample contains these many number of units. Let's move on to understand it, it, it in an even better way. So here this is water, water contains H2O molecules and this is a, a copper wire which contains copper atoms and this is a, a salt, salt sample which contains NaCl formula units, right? It contains, if I take one mole of NaCl, it contains one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions, right? So whether it may be compound, whether it may be element, whether it, it may be an ionic compound, it may be solid, a liquid or a gas, it is immaterial, it is immaterial, it, one mole of any compound contains Avogadro number of particles, okay. So here on the right hand side you will say mercury, mercury oxide, sucrose which is a covalent compound, sulphur which is an element and uh, you can see sodium chloride which is an ionic compound, the copper which is an element, okay. So if I say one mole of copper contains Avogadro number, Avogadro number of copper atoms, Avogadro number of copper atoms and similarly if I take one mole of, one mole of NaCl contains Avogadro number, N means Avogadro number, Avogadro number of NaCl formula units, Avogadro number of formula units and that is equals to one mole of NaCl contains one mole of, one mole of sodium ions and it contains one mole of one mole of Cl minus ions that is chloride ions okay so if i if i say one mole of water one mole of water contains avogadro number of water molecules h2o molecules it contains so here it is atoms here it is molecules here it is formula units right here it is ions okay so observe the difference observe the difference that is one number of any compound contains Avogadro number of particles, okay. So let's understand how huge or how big this mole is. You know that one mole is equals to 6.022 into 10 power 23. The 10 power 23 is a very huge number, very high number. So if you, instead of writing 10 power 23, if you write, uh, if you put 23 number of zeros, probably you will understand how big that number is, okay. So here is the two examples I'll show you uh, how big a mole is. Okay. So let's take the first one. The volume occupied by one mole of softballs would be about the size of the earth. So if you collect 6.022 into 10 power 23 number of the softballs if you take, if you collect all these balls together and if you measure the whole volume and that volume would be approximately equal to the volume of the earth, right? It sounds interesting, okay? Like I'll give you one more example which which is also very interesting, okay? Here, uh, instead of the soft balls, now you take Olympic short put balls, take one mole of Olympic short put balls and if you measure the weight of all this one mole of short put balls, that weight would be approximately equal to the weight of earth, weight of earth. Okay, so this is a very quite, it's quite interesting one. If you take one mole of, one mole of soft, uh, one mole of short put balls and if you measure the, their weight and that would be equal to the weight of the earth as a whole. So you can see how huge or how big this one mole, that is 6.022 into 10 power 23 number of particles. Okay, so even if you take one mole of that one drop of water molecules, the number of 
one drop of water that contains around 10 power 20, uh, 10 power 21 and 10 power 22 number of water molecules. You can see that how huge this number is, right? Yeah. Now let's find out the significance of uh, this mole. That mole acts as a bridge. It acts as a bridge. It acts as a bridge between the grams, the mass, and number of particles. It also acts as a um, acts as a bridge between grams and volume, and particles and volume. Okay. So let's see how it acts as a bridge. Say suppose. I know that I have taken 10 grams of water I have taken. I wanted to find how many water molecules it contains. How many water molecules it contains. So basically, I am trying to find a relationship between mass of a substance and number of particles. So is it possible to get a relation between these two? That is mass and number of particles? Yeah, it is possible. It is possible through the mole concept. Okay. So, First calculate how many moles are there in 1 in, in 10 grams of water. Okay? So here the number of moles is defined as mass given by the molecular mass. Okay? So mass given is 10 grams, the molecular mass that is 18 grams. So from this you will get the number of moles. So this number of moles, you can use this number of moles to calculate the number of particles. Okay? Because we know that 1 mole of anything contains Avogadro number of particles. So here 1 mole of water contains Avogadro number of water molecules. Avogadro number of water molecules. So here these are my number of moles, the 10 by 18. So 1 mole contain Avogadro number. So 10 by 18 contains how many? So question is done. We got the answer. So that, that means we are able to find the number of particles, the number of water molecules from the mass of water we have taken. Okay. It's possible because here the mole is acting as the bridge between these two. Not only these two, even if you take the particles and volume, the volume is especially for a gas. So at one, at STP, at standard temperature and uh, pressure, the one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 liters, 22.4 liters. Like if I take one mole of hydrogen, if I take one mole of carbon dioxide or one mole of a methane, all these gases at STP, they occupy the same volume that is 22.4 liters. So this is the volume occupied by the gas and from this, if I know the volume of gas, I can calculate the number of moles present in it. Say suppose my volume of some gas is uh, say suppose 44.8 liters. I want to calculate how many number of moles are present in it. I can calculate it through this volume because the one mole is equivalent to 22.4 liters. So, the 44.8 liters is equivalent to how many moles? That is 2 moles, right? So, here the volume can be related to the number of moles. So, once you know the moles, you can calculate the mass using this expression. This expression can be used to calculate the moles versus mass, okay? So, even if I know the particles, I can calculate the volume. I can calculate the volume of the gas, volume occupied by the gas from the number of particles. Okay, how can I calculate? I will calculate from the particles, I will calculate the number of moles. From the number of moles, I will calculate the volume, right? So, these three quantities, you can say the mole is, is the one that is that is acting as a bridge between these three, these three quantities, okay? So, this is a very, very important to understand this particular concept to solving many numerical questions. Now, the numerical questions you can solve if you understand and how a mole is acting as a bridge between these three things. Okay, so this is about the mole concept, the definition of a mole and, and how it is acting as a bridge between the mass, the particles and volume occupied by gas. So students, in this part, we discussed about mole concept. We discussed about what is a mole, what are the number of atoms or molecules or formula units present in one mole of solid, a liquid or a gas. And we also discussed about how that mole is used to convert the mass of the substance into the number of particles and vice versa. And these are all the things that we learned in mole concept. So in our next part, we'll discuss about the empirical and molecular formulas. So stay tuned 